Welcome to Brute Facts. Thank you, everybody, that's joining us tonight. I have a YouTube superstar sensation, Aaron Ra. Uh, I think it's going to be a fantastic conversation. It's going to be a great show. I'm looking forward to the conversation. Um, also, if you look in the description, I have links to his website and his YouTube. Uh, there's links to all my socials. And there's the content creator fund that I started to um, help up and coming content creators, uh, those who may not be able to afford the equipment or for struggling content creators, formerly known as the Christian Content Creator Fund. Uh, now it's just the Content Creator Fund because I tried to make it clear that it wasn't just for Christians. I had kind of a motivation for naming it, naming it that. But I have see, received, you know, several inquiries and things about, uh, well, is it just for Christians? Is it just for Christians? So it's it, it's for anybody. You can go to these links. Uh, you can donate one time or you can donate monthly. And if you go to brutefacts.com, I have um, there you can contact me and I will actually send an application if you are somebody that needs help with the content that you have now or want to get into it. With that said, the funds are low. Anybody that can give a dollar, 50 cents, anything, uh, check it out. Welcome to the Brute Facts Podcast with your host and everybody's favorite Christian, Eddie Kroon. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell for future content. Hello, hello, Mr. Ra. How are you doing? It's all right. It's all right. Good to be here. <laughs> oh, you're so enthusiastic. Uh, so for, for people that's been living under a rock and don't know who you are, tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, for ooh, several years now, uh, I've been an activist for secular science education, uh, primarily uh, countering the claims of creationism. And that has uh, inevitably forced me into political activism because the creationism argument is not a scientific one. It's not even really a religious one. It's more of a political one, as was established by the wedge strategy that was accidentally leaked to the public from the Discovery Institute late in the 90s. So there, there was a concentrated effort to undermine science to teach creationism instead. And this, this uh, formulated distrust of science was supposed to leave people susceptible to believing in religious mysticism. And then the people that, that were orchestrating this plan had explained that they wanted to go beyond that to establish a virtual theocracy, a government that uh, in some cases, according to the reconstructionists, at least they wanted a government that would enforce Levitical law. Yes. Um, is So would you be referring to... Um, and I have to apologize. That is not a very loud and rude cat. That is my parrot. Is that your parrot mimicking the cat? That is hilarious. My parrot has figured out that the cats get attention if they meow, so he meows whenever I'm not in the room. Yeah. <laughs> that is well, when I first heard it, I thought it was my daughter in the other room who knew I was starting the show and was yelling. And, and I was fixing to mute it and pop you up on the screen by yourself and yell. And I was like, wait a minute, that's a cat. And now it's, <laughs> <laughs> now I know it's not even a cat. Yeah. He was oh. quiet until the show started. <laughs> yeah. I didn't hear anything in the, uh, in the, the background. It's, so it's mean? a downside of, it's a downside of doing a podcast studio. He hear you know, I'm not in the same room as him. And so when he hears me speaking, he makes that noise, which completely defeats the purpose of being in a, separate oh, studio yeah. <laughs> like i have to do it next to him so that he'll shut up we we had a cockatiel um i love that bird and every morning i would go in to make uh coffee he would uh, without missing a beat and i'm like i look over that you know i heard it every morning and it's like every time i was still surprised by it and i'm like you dirty bird you know i'm in my boxers and and i miss that thing when i traveled for work uh, not hearing the bird sing in the morning and, and, you know, make the different noises throughout the day. It was like something was missing. I didn't think I'd actually miss it, but I do. 
<laughs> he is going to town. Uh, he or she? He. He. Oh, that's why. He's got to steal yeah. the show, just like all us men. <laughs> and when I do, uh, when I do my green, my green screen recordings, he has to sound off on those too, insisting on going rock, 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 just just to make sure that I have no usable audio. <laughs> That's, I had a uh, a customer um, back in the day that had an African gray parrot, and they had rescued it from uh, a home, and they had taught that thing every possible cuss word, slur, and slogan that there was. So, you know, you'd walk in the house, and the first time I ever walked in, he's like, here's that son of a bitch. And I was like, what? Who, who said that? <laughs> There's a freaking, you know, this huge African gray parrot. Um, yeah, my, cool. Mine is one of the smartest ones. The African gray is the smartest. Uh, mine is coming up on that pretty close. It's a is a double yellow headed Amazon. Oh yes, those are nice too. And they're expensive, man. If, you, if to... anybody wants to know what that looks like, just imagine a bald eagle with the black part in green and the white part in yellow. <laughs> <laughs> What are the what are the ones the white ones with the mohawks you always see headbanging on different videos? Oh, uh, that's uh, the cockatoo. Cockatoo, that's right. Yeah, those are from Australia. We we went to Australia, and uh, I got to see a tree filled with what I estimated to be ten million dollars worth of cockatoos. <laughs> oh, too bad you couldn't bag them and bring them back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, I, I don't advocate that sort of thing, but at the same yeah. time, I know how expensive a cockatoo is, and it's just like there's yeah. this tree has got millions of dollars in it. It's just sitting there. Well, the first time I went to South Florida with my wife, she's from South Florida, um, uh, Dade County, and there were literally flocks of parakeets, and I'm just like look at all this money just fly because I'm from Tennessee originally. And, you know, everybody pays, you know, good money at 50 bucks to a hundred bucks, you know, depending on the parakeet at the time. And it's like these whole flocks just everywhere, making all the noise in the world they could. Now, now the parakeets in Florida, those are all going to be escaped pets, right? Initially. I think so. I think that's yeah. uh, how they ended up because it, it is the tropics. So um, I, I believe so. I think that's how they ended up with them. Kind of like the, pythons there too and the ever yeah and the iguanas the iguanas yeah 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 everything's all fine and well with exotic pets until a hurricane comes through and throws them all out in the wild <laughs> yeah <laughs> so, <laughs> so you were talking about um were you referring to uh, was that the court case that actually happened in tennessee about the creation um versus or trying to get creation taught in um the in school with uh well the, the case in tennessee was from 1925 that was the what was oh, famously okay. called the scopes monkey trial uh there was a more recent case in 2005 that is much more relevant uh and that was part of the plan that i mentioned the the, the wedge strategy that was released accidentally from the uh, the discovery institute de detailing their plan to turn the United States into a theocracy. Now they weren't all reconstructionists. They didn't all expect to uh, enforce Levitical law. Right. But I've, I've spoken with a number of these people who really do want a monarchy or some sort of authoritarian uh, regime. They are not into democ the democratic system at all. They will tell you that the United States was founded on a covenant between God and Moses and that the uh, that our judicial system was based on the Ten Commandments, but there's not a word of that that's true. In fact, the founding fathers were quite explicit in the fact that they wanted a system of government that would be the very opposite of the one that is commonly associated with Moses. A yes. government that was of and by and for the people rather than decreeing any you know, any God in the first place preamble of uh, of the you know the, the founding document as so many other countries did up to that time the united states was the first secular government and consequently was the first and at, at that time the only government that could offer freedom of religion because you can't have freedom of religion if the state has a declared religion that every other faith then has to show homage to so everybody else becomes a second class citizen yeah yeah, and so we were able to offer freedom of religion by offering freedom from religion, and this was a, a model that many other countries have since emulated, 
And we, unfortunately, are going backwards yeah. with all these people declaring that, you know, that America is a Christian country that it never was. And as I said, the founding fathers were, were quite explicit about that. We, that. we were not based on the Ten Commandments. I forget which, which of the founding fathers specifically referenced the Ten Commandments when he said that, we had nothing, that, that our government has nothing to do with the Ten Commandments. And then others like uh, John Adams said that the United States is in no sense founded on the Christian religion. And there were a number of others that, that, you know, said, that, that said things along the lines of, you know, Christianity has its time and place, or maybe it's fine in this capacity, but... We shouldn't have it in government, and if you if you allow the integration of church and state, then you'll ruin both government and religion. And famously, there was a number of people that said that that no no man should be forced by tax money to support the building of a church or the keeping of a church to, to which he doesn't believe. And the Supreme Court, I'm sorry to say, today violated that statute. They've now decreed that the government can offer federal funds to support re- the building of a religious edifice. Mm. That's, you know, it. and so when I have the conversation, um, my conversation is, I'll even go as far, you know, with, with Christians like that, um, you know, that talk about founded as a Christian nation and things like that. I would say, okay, let's, uh, just for the sake of argument, just concede that you're right. Right now, just because Christianity is the majority uh, religion here in this country, you're okay with all of these things. But Christians are going down and down in numbers in the country. So what if Muslims come here and they become the majority? Now you've already set this precedence of allowing religion in the government and, and theocracies and things like this. What are you going to say about that? You're just going to revert back to, well, it's supposed to be a Christian nation. And I'm like, we need to halt all of this talk about having any religion in because just because we are the majority right now, I I mean, that is a Christian, just because we are a slight majority, um, then it doesn't, you're opening the gates for all of these other religions. It could be one day and they're and they're totally going to be up in arms and pissed off if that ever happens the, the big problem with, with the people you're talking about is that they they seem to be unable to realize that things change but if you look at the demographics of the united states for example if you go back 500 years the, dem- the demography here was very different than it is now it's going to be different years from now and people don't understand it's that if whatever you think a Christian country means is not going to be that way. I mean, just in the course of um, in the last 25 years or so that that I've been an activist, we've got the atheist has gone from three or five percent people of the population that would that would identify that, that would admit to being atheist to uh, the non-religious or the those who abstain from religion have no denomination don't discover don't declare religion to be important if they have no religious beliefs they they're effectively atheist even if they don't know what the word means because a lot of people don't so the population of unbelievers and and effectively atheists has uh, i i've watched it eclipse uh, Judaism and then i watched it eclipse Catholicism in recent years and i uh, think we just recently uh eclipsed protestants as well now not all of them together right right but but e- either of the factions by themselves there are now more unbelievers than there are protestants yeah and now know, it, uh, another important thing to remember is that christianity is in a state of decline around the world atheism is on the rise in all 50 states and globally well, I think well, I think it is uh, in the third world countries. It, it's on the rise, but well, it's it's on the rise here in the United States as well. No, I'm talking about the uh, Christianity in the third world countries, but more the developed countries. You're right; it is. Um, it's definitely on the rise there. But with, my, the, with know, the third world countries, they're mostly Catholic, and the Catholics, uh, you know, like the the last few popes, for example, have endorsed evolution. So we, you know, at least it's not the creationists are, are not in, uh, in not in control there, but to large degree we have religion or Christianity is in a, st- a state of decline 
and Islam is the fastest growing religion. Yes, there is. So it doesn't take a lot of forethought to realize that there's less and less Christians every day and more and more Muslims every day. Then it becomes a race yeah. as to who's going to get to the majority first. Yeah. Is it going to be the atheists or is it going to be the Muslims? And if it's, if it's the atheists, then we, we still have protected freedom of religion and because that's what we're all about. And, uh, and if it's the Muslims, well, then you lose all that. And everything, yeah. every law that the United States had ever passed for a faith-based initiative, everything that was meant to benefit Christianity will be used in the Islamification of the U.S. Yeah, and, and you know, all of the Christians that wanted to fight for these things, um, recognizing Christianity and, and the Bible and the Ten Commandments and all these things in government, ain't nothing they could say about it because they're setting the precedent for it now. Um, I've noticed an awful lot of hypocrisy when there are faith-based initiatives passed, when there's funding for uh, religious schools or whatever. And then, like, some Muslim group will will go, okay, good, we're, we want our share of those funds. And then suddenly the Christian activists remember what secularism means. Oh, well, it wasn't supposed to be for Muslims. It's only... And I've had people tell... I've had Christians tell me this, that, that freedom of religion, they think means that you're free to worship Jesus in whatever Christian denomination you like. Mm. That's what they think. True story. In Tennessee, years ago, they were building a new courthouse in Middle Tennessee. And there was this outrage over, because Tennessee's got a um, pretty significant Muslim population now, um, or a growing Muslim population. And there was outrage over a wash area that was built into the bathroom, um, presumably for, you know, Muslims for uh, before prayer time and other things like that for cleansing. Massive outrage, petitions, all these things. They were so angry. Turns out it was a mop sink. And they made this huge ordeal about the fact that because they thought it was just a cleansing station for Muslims. And I'm like, is this not the freedom of religion? You know, is this not, is it only freedom of Christianity? You know, and I think that those fundamentalists are a huge reason why we have so many um, that identify you know, they, they still think that God exists or something, some kind of theism. They don't want to be identified with it um, because of how much harm that it's it's done publicly. Uh, like your your work against, you know, young earth creationism or, or this dogmatic creationism doctrine. It's not science. It's theology. Um, when I argue, I mean, people ask me why I don't argue with the with the uh, with the with the more accomplished or, or the more serious scholars of theology, whatever, uh, it's because, I mean, I mean they, they criticize me for taking on easy targets. But the thing is, when you're arguing philosophy, there's no winner, right? The, the people will mislabel me and they'll, they'll tell me that I'm, a, that I'm a logical positivist because they think I'm into verificationism when I'm not. But they will make that, they will make that assumption and based on that assumption, they will put the label on and they will criticize me based on that because that was out of fashion in the 19th century. But then they will cite Aquinas as if he trumps Hume. I'm like, excuse me, there's, a, there, there's quite a few centuries in the middle there that you're yeah. ignoring. So, but there just doesn't seem to be a way to win a philosophical argument. And that's why philosophers exist, to argue. That's, but, that's exactly right. <laughs> creationists, however, make demonstrably false statements, things you can prove to be wrong. And they, they make their denying realities that we can prove to be correct. And when I say prove, I don't mean mathematically, of course. I mean by an overwhelming preponderance of evidence beyond reasonable doubt. So... But that's the reason that I make the argument, because I want to prove the point. I'm trying to show how dishonest creationism is, because it is deliberately dishonest. Everything they say is all based, it's, it depends entirely on frauds, falsehoods, and fallacies. 
it works to my advantage as an atheist. If I want to make other atheists just show how creationism lies, uh, because with the creationism being such a false dichotomy, one of the many fallacies that they rely on, once the house of cards comes down, it's all over. Yeah. And they go directly from the rabid fundamentalist to hardcore atheist. But if I'm talking to somebody who is not a creationist, somebody who compartmentalizes their faith or, or rests in the philosophy as you do, then that's a much more unassailable position. There's, there's not a way to win the argument conclusively, so I don't bother. Yeah, that's, and that's true. Um, and, and, you know, I, um, which is, uh, it, here, here, here's a perfect example of the kind of people that you're talking about. The fact that I have you on now, and I'm agreeing with some of the things that you're saying and not pushing back and not debating, even though everybody knows my show is not a debate show. Um, it's, I, I, I get lots of uh, messages from Christians. It's like, how could you agree with this? How could you not push back on that? And I'm like, you know, I, I think for myself and I see where there's <laughs> issues in this country. And just because I'm a Christian doesn't mean I'm going to toe the line of fundamentalism uh, or this dogmatic creationism uh, you know, things like that. I quite often say, I don't think that atheists are irrational. How many Christians you ever heard say that? Because I think it's an abductive case either way. I, th what I find convincing may not be convincing to somebody else. So what, what's the yeah. big deal, you know, there. And, uh, yeah, it's, uh, unfortunately also the anti-intellectualism that is growing tremendously, in conservative evangelical Christianity and the yeah, West. exactly. And this this is a, a huge concern for me. I can't believe how stupid we are collectively as a as a as a people. I mean, I was told by somebody in my own family yesterday that um, that one that Trump is still president. Oh my god! Right? Yeah, it doesn't matter what what the hearings say because. That person can can just ignore all of the Senate hearings because it's all lies. They don't know one word that was said in any of those hearings, but they know it's all lies. Even from Trump's own staff and his children, it's all lies. How do you how do you know that if you don't know anything that was being said? <laughs> yeah, and, and 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 the same person told me that the reason. That, you know, that Putin planned the invasion of Ukraine for the goal of expanding Russia to its Soviet size. The reason that he did that years ago while Trump was president was because Biden would be president and now wants to supposedly start a nuclear war with China. And that's the, the fact that Biden, that Biden doesn't want to do this. None of that is true. But how could it, it's like it's like blaming Obama for his response to 9-11 when he hadn't <laughs> even been elected yet. <laughs> yeah, it you know? is right. That's yeah. I mean, it, so you no know, Putin did not invade Ukraine because he was following Biden's bidden. That's that's not what's happening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Somebody uh somebody was asked one time uh why they debated um uh flat earthers and the person you know was you know hopefully if i can change one mind if i can change his mind and the response to them i don't remember exactly where this was but it was so phenomenal was when you have uh a, a conspiracy of things like that you're into alternative science you're going against what's overwhelmingly the case in scientific theory and all of these things you at some point you leave rationality behind and you so when you're arguing with people like that you are arguing with people that are so far into it they've left rationality behind you're literally arguing with an irrational person yeah, the way I've described it is, is creationism requires a degree of reality denial. You have to, you have to deny mainstream science. A young, earth creationism, young earth creationism requires that you deny a bit more. 
than the old earth lot do. And then if you're into flat earth, well, then you're just denying even more reality. And if you're a geocentrist, well, then you're denying even more reality until you get to the point where you have people who deny all reality altogether to who just say that everything is imagination. That all reality is imagined. Yeah. And, and consequently color. only the imagination is real. <laughs> well, Here's what I, I often say. It's not really popular, of course. Uh, now, I love just my brothers and sisters that are young earth creationists, as long as you're not dogmatic, arrogant, you know, out there trying to affect policy and things like that with it. <laughs> you can be a young earth creationist. I love you. Um, but I often get a lot of pushback because, and this is my point, I think that flat earth is easier to defend than young earth creationism. And the reason I say that is, at least with the flat earth idea, you have intuition to fall on. It looks flat to you. You know, if you're just walking around, it looks flat. Well, young earth creationism, everything points to being old. There's not even the intuition there. It's counterintuitive. So I think they're in a worse scenario um, than the flat earther in that instance. I'm dri I was driving from... I was driving across Iceland from the town of Fluther on my way to Selfoss. And I can see this mesa ahead of me. And I know the shape of that mesa. I know that there's a kind of a foot at the, at, at the foot of the mountain. There's a, a jutting thing that goes to the next town. And I can't see it from where I am now. But I know that as I continue driving toward that mountain, I'm going to see more and more of that mountain. And then again, eventually I'm going to see that bottom piece. And eventually I do. So I'm watching more and more of that mountain be exposed the closer I get to it. So it doesn't even look like a flat earth if you're just wow. on it, if you pay any attention. Yeah. But, well, but if you're a flat earther, then you, you are required to deny any and all reality, all evidence. Evidence is meaningless. Yeah. Yeah, but if they never take that trip or anything and they just walk around everywhere, at least they can rely and say, I have an intuition, it's flat. <laughs> I, I had an argument with a flat earther that lasted five hours, and it was the, oh, the only reason man. it did was because it was morbid curiosity. Oh I just okay. I just had to know, is this really the absolute stupidest person I've ever encountered in my life? Uh, one of the many things that he said that amazed me was I'm like, have you ever been on an airplane? Because I mean, there's a lot of things that you'll notice you know, that, that contradict what he was saying. I mean, specifically, he was saying that the reason, get this, the reason that he believes that the earth is flat is because he saw the clouds behind the sun. <sighs> now, if the clouds are relatively thin, they will not obscure the sun. And, and the sun will look like it's piercing right through them. It could even look like they're behind him. Now, that would have to be a very special day because we've all seen every other day when the clouds move in front of the sun and now it's we're in the shade, right? Everybody has experienced that. But he's got a cognitive dissonance. He's got a confirmation bias thing going on. Right. So he imagines that he sees the clouds behind the sun and so he's just forgotten all of those times that the clouds were in front of the sun. And now he thinks that it's possible for the clouds to get behind the sun. And I, I bring up, have you ever been on an airplane? Because apart from the stratus clouds, which look very different than, than most, you know, cumulus and uh, most types of clouds that we see, only the stratus clouds can be above the airplane at its cruising altitude of 35 to 40,000 feet. All the clouds are going to be way below you, mm -hmm. right? And so you're going to know there's no way those clouds were behind that. The sun's still in the same spot in the sky as it always right. is, but the clouds are way the hell down there. So I asked this guy if he's ever been on an airplane and he'd only been on an airplane once. And I have to wonder, you've been on an airplane. You didn't look out the window. No, he didn't look out the window. I don't understand people who are incurious. I don't understand people yeah. who don't want to know things. I don't understand not pursuing answers, not asking questions. You don't want to understand anything. As a matter of fact, you, they want not to understand something because that means it's easier to believe it. Yes, exactly. If you don't investigate it, yes. you don't have to abandon your belief. <laughs> yeah, and where, where his argument finally fell apart 
was that he, I guess he thought that I was super rich. Because <laughs> remember, we're, we're, we're talking about somebody that's just the dumbest lump I've ever talked to in my life. But he thought that I had my own private jet. Oh, what? Yes. I don't Dude, know I'll be an atheist tomorrow and start a YouTube channel if I can yeah. get a private jet. <laughs> yeah. I assure you, I am the lowest paid member of the Illuminati. <laughs> Because I've been accused of being in the Illuminati too. I just I, oh, I, I feel cheated gosh. at that because I haven't received any of my checks from them. Yeah, but the, the but the point is, he says you can't go to Antarctica. Now it doesn't matter that wow. you can look. They they get they offer guided tours to Antarctica. You can book a tour to go to Antarctica. Take your family. It doesn't matter. He says you can't go. So maybe maybe Antarctica is just like a, a front that he, maybe he thinks it's a <laughs> it's fake, fake place it's that people fake. go to. It's, it's just something that they 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 say is Antarctica. I'm like, well, here it, this is what we could do. I said we can do this. I know people who can do this. Let's let's do this. Um, we go south of the, the what is it Cape of Good Hope, South America, Chile. Mm, we just continue south. Yeah, we, the Cape, we follow the maps. Yeah, I think, yeah, we get to Antarctica. We land at one of their stations. And with, uh, with some jets, you can have enough fuel to do this. You take off from that station, and you follow the coastline. Just follow the coastline all the way around the continent. And you just keep, you notice you're going to be keep, you know, we go, uh, let's say we go clockwise, we're going to keep ba banking to the right. All the way around the island, or the continent, rather. Um, however, if you're right, then we would be banking ever imperceptibly to the left and we would run out of fuel long before we get to our destination. If I'm right, we would go all the way around the continent and land where we left off. And then you would know, and you'd be able to see the sun's position throughout all of that. And you would know. And he got angry. He thought I was, he thought I was going to force him onto my private jet plane. <laughs> He thought I was going to oh, force him man. to surrender his precious belief. Oh. And that's what revealed to me that he doesn't believe that himself. Not really. Yeah. He knows that it's not really true. It's just something he likes to make believe. And that's the most alarming thing. I've, I've found a number of people who have in different ways phrased this sentiment that they know on some level that what they believe is not really true, but they believe it anyway. In at least one case, I had somebody admit it exactly that, that they knew it's not true, but they, they believe it anyway. Matter of fact, my best friend said that, um, one of my best friends said, I'm Christian because I like to believe that, not because I think it's true. Wow. And I don't think he ever understood the logic of what he just admit, admitted to me. Man, yeah. <laughs> you just, you can't make these things up. I mean, it's... it's <laughs> It's, it's so I mean, with young Earth creationists, uh, I want to I want to build a TARDIS. I want to build a convincing TARDIS. Since these people are dumb enough to think that I have my own jet airplane, why not have a TARDIS? And then just see if they will get on board. Because we're going to go back. We're going to go back ten million years. You're young Earth creationists. You think the Earth was only here six thousand years? Yeah, we'll we'll go back. We'll go back seventy million years. I'm going to go show you dinosaurs. But if but if they believe it, if they believe what I'm saying that it's a real time machine, they won't get in. That's because true. Because they don't want their belief disproved. I've had one guy tell me that he would rather take a bullet in the ear than to give up his faith. I had another woman tell me that if she had absolute proof that Jesus died on the cross and was never resurrected, if she could, if she had the time machine and she could go back and see this for herself and watch Jesus's body rot, she said that she hoped that her faith would be strong enough to keep believing even when her eyes told her otherwise. Mm. Wow. So the, the problem that I come up with is that it's about whether you care what the truth is. So I I have a philosophy that doesn't allow me to be easily dis or easily uh, deceived, right? It's the thing about uh, if positive claims require positive evidence, uh, you can't say that something is the truth unless you can show the truth of it. 
So when when somebody is you know some batshit crazy person in my family or wherever else starts rattling off their weird ass conspiracy <laughs> theories, and they start telling me how that's the truth, right? And they're also confident. <laughs> oh, you'll find out after you die. Like, uh, no, we're not going to find out anything either of us because we'll be dead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you're going to say these true. things, if you're going to tell me that that's the truth. Is it the truth? Is it because the truth is what the facts are? Can you show me that that is the truth? No, then you don't get to call it the truth. That's the rule that right. I have to live by. You're going to have to live by that too. If you're going to talk to me, you don't get to say your shit is true when you don't get to, to, to show the truth of it. And then we all, we both know the extremists in my family know that if I say something is the truth, they know I can show it. I can show the truth of it right now. I don't have to say, you'll find out. I don't have to ever have to say that. We'll find out right now. I'll show you right now. Look it up. Google it. Let's go. They won't do it. They will yeah. not look at the evidence, any evidence I present. I've had people in my family plug their ears, close their eyes, and go, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, adults who don't want to know what the truth is because they have to believe something that they already know is not evidently true. Yeah. Before we get too far from it, I don't typically highlight um, comments from the chat during the show, but this one was epic. Um, this is from my friend Pasta Mike over at uh, Normalizing Atheism. He has his own uh, YouTube channel. Uh, you, you should check it out. He does mm -hmm. um, like professional style docu documentaries and things. He is phenomenal. I've, I've heard of normalizing atheism. Yeah, look, he's he says that's a private jet fallacy. <laughs> 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 I saw that and I was like, this. So the inside joke is I'm known as the fallacy guy around our circle of friends because, uh, you know, kind of jokingly, I, I'm like, that's a fallacy. That's this fallacy. You know, that's this fallacy. I'm always just, just screwing around calling out fallacy. So I'm the fallacy guy. So he had to throw that out there. <laughs> what, what, is the, what is the fallacy when they say we can't teach evolution because it's harmful to our culture? What is that? The, the, the argument from consequences? Oh, yeah, that yeah, that could be. I would say that it's probably an argument from em emotion um, or it could be a slippery slope fallacy. Um, well, when they say that even if it's true, we shouldn't teach it because it would be negative consequences of learning it. You know, Aaron... Um, I'm known as the fallacy guy and you just stomped me and made me look stupid <laughs> on my own show. <laughs> don't, off the top of my head, I'm drawing a blank. I'm not sure. Uh, maybe I think you're right. Maybe it's, it's one more. Is it fair fallacy. to call it too? Is it fair to call it too quick? We, when they accuse me of the very thing that they are guilty of, that I am not guilty of. That it's what I describe as the pot calling the silverware black. Yeah, no, they, it, it would have to be, um, uh, you doing exactly um, well, them p pointing out that you're doing something wrong when the point of it is they're, it, they're you're addressing what they're doing wrong. Um, so to just fire back and say, well, you believe this and you do this. Well, that doesn't address what was brought up to begin with. Well, what ends up happening to me, you know, all the time is they want to accuse non religion of being religion. That a lack of religion is somehow a religion, and the and the rejection of faith is faith. So that the only thing that, that the most negative, the strongest argument they think that they can make is by pinning all their own faults onto me, faults that I have adamantly rejected to begin with. You know, lack of religion, lack of faith is not a religious faith. So you can't pin that on me. You're you're putting your own faults that I don't share. Pot calling silverware black. Yeah, I often hear that um, that charge to uh, about uh, atheists like, the, well, it's a religion to them. It's a religion to them. And it's <laughs> no, it doesn't really fit any definition of religion. Yeah. Um, yeah, they may, you know, there, there's a lot of atheists that, that are passionate about it because, you know, they see certain consequences that may be a result or um, mm. they don't like the, you know, it's like political opinions or you know there's i don't think 
there's as much, I'm not going to say none, but I don't think there's as much as this party's right and this party's wrong as it is what you prefer, what your idea of how a country should be running things. Of course, certain parties can do certain things that can hurt uh, a demographic of people or specific people. So uh, it's fair to say, you know, that's right or wrong. But typically, yeah. I mean, <laughs> the atheist is um, you, get, getting careful. We just moved from religion into politics. Yeah, we're, yeah, we're going to get politics back is far less. <laughs> politics is so much less rational than religion. <laughs> oh, I agree. Absolutely. It is the most tribalistic team sport that we have in the U.S. And the biggest thing that I have with with the politics is often the same, same kind of argument that I have with that with religion is is, is the false dichotomy. That, okay, when they say that both sides are just as bad, I get so irritated at that argument. If I've spent a career, and I have, if I've spent a career citing the villain of the day, all of these bills, all of these ridiculous statements, all of these attacks on education, all of these undermining of human rights, all of them, every single one of them always only ever been a Republican. Everyone. I got them by name. I here's the video where they said the thing. Here's the quote directly. Here's here's the bill they're trying to pass, named out, right? Yeah. And then somebody will say Democrats are just as bad. Really? Find me a Democrat who is as dumb, as dishonest, as corrupt, as evil as Ted Cruz or or Louis Gohmert or or. Lauren Boebert or, or what is it? Marjorie Taylor green or any of dozens of other people, including the governor of my state, find a Democrat that is as bad as any of these guys. Dick Durbin, Nancy Pelosi. Uh, <laughs> these are the answers I'm, I get, but well, I'm, I'm, that, I'm a center you guy. Can find, so you so, can so find, I, I talk shit about both sides. <laughs> you, you can, I, I do too, but you yeah. can find Democrats. Cause I can, I know Democrats who are bad. Yeah. I don't know a single Democrat who is that bad. Not even well, Hillary is as bad as Donald Trump. Well, I'm, I'm more angry um, with, I remember I said, not even Hillary. Not <laughs> yeah. Well, you got to keep it nice now. You, you are going to come up missing, and we'll know what happens. <laughs> uh, no, what, what we what we're talking about if 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 there are bad Democrats, I mean, sure, there are there are corrupt Democrats. I can name some. There are yeah. dumb Democrats. There are liars among the Democrats. There's a few. They don't hold a candle to the majority of the of the Republicans that we hear about every day. The Lindsey Grahams, the Mitch McConnells, and so forth. The, the 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 guys that may as well have my mustache and be twirling it every day. Yeah, the am I so I'm 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 kind of more. I mean, I'm a true centrist guy. I'm I'm libertarian, and I'm all over the place. Um, a true kind of moderate. But one of the things that does aggravate me the most, um, and this is the last thing I'll say about the political side, and we we'll go back to the religion. Uh, no, nope, we uh, already stepped in it. <laughs> I know, I know. My, I don't like how um, evangelical Christians are so married to one specific party, and I hate the way that they pander to evangelical christians and, and not even just evangelical christians but the most fundamentalist yeah. evangelical christians fundamentalist christians are a minority in this country but the rest of christians in this country are ignorant and, and they was... hear this loud fundamentalism and they adopt these views from the fundamentalists not even realizing that most of it's probably in contrast to their own denomination because they don't go bother to learn these things so it yeah. becomes the loud minority that influences more the majority and the political leaders. And, and that's what really, really aggravates me. So we were talking about dichotomies, right? False dichotomies and how people need to be able to see nuance. Mm -hmm. And so people is it's either an, it is an either or situation. That's the way they see everything. It's either black or it's white, right? You're either left or you're right. Now, and if you're on the left, then you have to be radical leftist because you can't ever be left without being a radical. You have to have the word, you have to say the, the adjective radical, radical because this is the way you've been conditioned. You know, Fox News never says the word leftist without saying radical in front of it. 
They don't ever say radical in front of the right wing, even though that's frequently, increasingly appropriate. There are two other uh, axes there between authoritarian and libertarian, which or you know, libertarian not being the libertarian party, but being the anti-authoritarian axis. And so people want it, don't they don't realize that there's 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 not just two. They, they want to say that there's only two boxes that you are in, but it actually those are actually two extremes. And there's a broad area between them, and then there's another dimension to it, because whether whether you're authoritarian or whether you're not authoritarian, every president in my lifetime, Republican or Democrat, every single one of them, has been in the authoritarian right quadrant. Obama, Hillary, Bill Clinton, JFK, everybody. They were all in the authoritarian right. Now we and that means Biden too. Now we could argue that Kamala Harris is arguably in the left. I'm not sure if it's uh, anti-authoritarian or authoritarian, but she's she's arguably on the left. Bernie, Noam Chomsky, a few other people are dead center of the of the libertarian left quadrant where I am. But we've never had a president from there. But everyone thinks that every Republican means right wing and every Democrat is left wing. No, we've got what eight left leaning Democrats in Congress. Yeah, yeah, and it's it, they kind of you know go with um, uh, the direction of the party to you know because if you're not uh, even if you're somebody is if you have a you know stronger right wing. A lot of them are going to pander to the harder right to get the election. Yep. And, and then they're going to speak like it. Uh, think, thankfully, not all of them vote the same way. <laughs> and then nobody knows it. what right or left <laughs> means either. Yeah, I know. It's, it was the other thing. Well, why do I identify as a left? Well, the re primary reason is not because I identify that way. Because, I mean, most of the people on the right identify that way because they want to. Yeah. I've been to a number of political rallies here in Texas where I've, I've seen somebody make the statement that they are born into the Republican Party. That people in Texas, and this was a Republican speaking, he's, he's speaking to a Republican audience. Admitting that, you know, we, we think we owe our party loyalty as a birthright because we were born into the Republican Party. You were not born into a political party. That doesn't work. You grow up, you make decisions, you decide what policies make sense to you, and that determines what your, what your alignment is. But that's not the way it works here in Texas. So there's like, you know, regular red-blooded people are Republicans, and then evil... Uh, drug-addled, pedophile, devil worshippers, cannibals are the the, the leftists. But the yeah. reality is that leftists, uh, I identify as left because I took a handful of political quizzes, at least a half a dozen of them. <laughs> I took seriously, I took a half a half yeah. a dozen on independent political quizzes, different series of questions and such, and they all put me in exactly the same place. No variation between them. So I figure that there must be some legitimacy to that. Uh, so that that's I have objective evidence for me being in that quadrant. Uh, but the, but the other the other reason is that uh, the left values human rights over corporate profits, whereas the right wants to remove all regulations and restrictions or whatever to let corporations do whatever the hell they want and not be held accountable by any laws. Yeah, and I just remembered. Uh, this is kind of all making sense now because you ran as you ran for office, didn't you, as a Democrat? Yeah, for about a minute and a half. <laughs> you filthy I scoundrel! <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I was in politics just long enough to know that I did not want to be in politics. Yeah, that's... yeah, I, I'm no good at begging for money, and that's really all it is. Our system is so flawed yes. fundamentally. That's yeah. I forgot who it who it was that said um, if you want to see uh, paraphrasing a, a good man go bad then send him to Washington um, <laughs> you know it's because it, it is you see the juniors that come in on both sides and it's like all of this you know I'm gonna do this I'm gonna do this I'm gonna shake this up I'm gonna do this on both sides of it and then when they get there they realize hey they're holding the purse and if you don't toe the line 
you're not going to get the endorsement and you won't be reelected. So the system is set up in a way that you're going to come up there and you're going to do what they say you're going to do um, or you're not going to get funding. Two problems with that. One is that when I when I ran here in my district in Texas, I was told that I would need to start thirty five thousand dollars to begin a campaign. Whoa, that's to begin. This is for a job that pays twenty one thousand dollars a year in which you are employed every other year. So you have to have your own stable income outside of that before you even run for office. But here's the point. You got to you got to start with thirty five thousand dollars and spend upward from there. And my opponent in that race was given a check for two million dollars to Ooh, begin with. That's such crap. Just to start, and his platform was keeping brown people out of the state and uh, making sure that trans people couldn't pee. Oh my god! Those were his two most important issues. Yeah. Oh, and teaching creationism in public schools. That's... But if you're in England, if you're running for a similar sort of office in England, you're capped at 35,000 pounds. You can't spend more than that. That's a dramatic difference in how the political systems work, isn't it? Absolutely. Plus, wow. if you have ranked voting, we have a situation where we end up voting yes, for the I lesser evil and the greater ranked. evil wins. Yes, but if you have ranked voting, then you no longer have, you know, the, 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 the good guy shows up. You've got your third option. Well, I really like him, but I can't vote for him because if I vote for him, then that costs the vote from the yeah. other one. And that means that the worst one will win. So, but if you have ranked voting, then you don't have that spoiler anymore. And then your better candidate will can, can, and will actually come out on top. I am all for rank voting. I, I love the idea. Um, ever since I saw, um, you know, what it consisted of and, and all that, it's it seems to be the most commonsensical way of approaching um, uh, uh, voting systems. Um, but before we get too far in those weeds, since we're already in the mud and all this, <laughs> uh, what are you drinking on? Oh, at the moment, I'm drinking uh, this is a local brew, Revolver oh, Blood and yeah. Honey. Are you, in Texas? Normally, you live in Texas now? I do. I do. Uh, I don't normally drink yellow, but when I drink yellow, it is always this, mm. um, if I can get a hold of this. Uh, the only other beer I've got, which is much better than this, this is a good beer, but the, the other beer I have is so expensive, I can't afford to drink it. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> So are you, <laughs> are you, are you a Shiner Bot guy? No, 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 no. It irritates the hell out of me. No, I anywhere in Texas, I say, what's the darkest, I say, what's the darkest beer you got? And they always say, we got Shiner. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like that's not dark. I think the black only... is dark. <laughs> yes. Yeah, well, I'm on the opposite end. I'm, uh, I'm a, uh, I'm a bourbon and whiskey guy. Um, yeah. That's the, uh, the other beer that I can't afford to drink. It's bourbon barrel aged. Uh, it's several years old, mm. and it cost me twenty five dollars per twelve ounce bottle. Whoa! Yeah, it's also I think sixteen percent ABV. Uh, well, there's that. So, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm I'm drinking on um, Jameson Irish whiskey. Um, I've been to that distillery. Really? Oh, that... and Dan Bushmills. And bu bu oh, I like some Bushmills. My Jim, uh, he was in the chat early. I'm not sure if he's still there. He's our local uh, whiskey and bourbon connoisseur. So he gives me point. Now, bourbon, I, I know my bourbon, but I never really was into like scotch and Irish whiskey and all that. And he had told me, I said, hey, man, I want to get some good Irish whiskey that's not um, super, that oak kind of rough taste that a lot of scotch. I don't know why they like that. He said, then try Bushmills. And I was like, okay, I'll try it. And I got some the other night and it is absolutely phenomenal. It is. It's, it's a lot better than Jameson. <laughs> I, I will say that. <laughs> yeah. So, um, my, my son-in-law's name is Jameson. So uh, as a wedding gift, I gave him a bottle of Bushmills. Oh, there you go. That's, <laughs> that's how you do it right there. 
<laughs> yeah. So uh, I went to I went to Aberdeen. I have a have a, a friend out in Aberdeen, and he took me to a a, a distillery for Glen Giddy. and he, he bought me a bottle of that, which was very kind, and it was pretty good. And he told me that I'd never had scotch before, that I'd never had whiskey before. And I said, well, you know, I've had Jack Daniels, Bushmills, uh, Jameson, Johnny Walker. And then before I even have a chance to say that, he says, all you've had is stuff from Kentucky, or Tennessee, or, or Ireland, and that doesn't count. <laughs> oh, Ben's fighting words right there. <laughs> Ireland doesn't even count. <laughs> it doesn't even count. That's... <laughs> Oh, I haven't tried a scotch yet. I think I like. Apparently, uh, if it ain't Scottish, it's crap. Let's <laughs> see if it ain't Scottish, mate. And, you know, I'm actually mostly Scottish, so I'm probably uh, pissing off my uh, ancestors with the Irish. Yeah, on that same trip, we also uh, we also went to go pay a visit to Brewdog. Brewdog. Being a, being a, a beer guy, I had to go to Brewdog. Yeah, I just, man, I, light beer. I'm just a light beer guy. I'm, I'm a sissy when it comes to, you know what it is? It's the the more hoppier it is uh, or the um, uh, darker and thicker it is, I get like flush just all in my face. Being, I guess, Scottish and English, it, it just, I, it gives me, after a while, it gives me a headache. I just, I can't do the. Well, I don't know how much we've turned off your audience already, but I mean, since we just changed topics so violently, but, <laughs> but I, I prefer my beer to be, it should, it must be at least double digit ABV. I like it super thick, creamy, chewy. I want to be able to have to chew it. It, it needs to be so <laughs> thick that it pours slowly. Uh, it, the best beer for me is one that when you pour it out of the bottle, it looks like you're draining the crankcase of a 65 Chevy. <laughs> <laughs> That's the first time I saw the Sam a Samuel Adams Dark on tap in Boston. I was like, what in the world is that? I mean, it was like <laughs> black coming out. Oh, Will Stewart said, if you say Bud Light, Eddie, I'm unsubscribing. I love Bud Light. Shut oh, up. <laughs> Why do that to yourself? <laughs> Why not have a beer instead? <laughs> oh, <laughs> hold on. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. We're going to settle this right now. Um, I was in El Paso, Texas, and there was, uh, Colombian police officers that were being trained for, uh, a lot of the cartel and drug wars and things going on in, in Juarez. And this whole group of Colombians, uh, this, the hotel I was at the bar had all kinds of beer on tap and I'm sitting over at a table. They got the bar full and, you know, having a great time just partying and all this. And, and after a little while, um, they all kind of, you know, head off to the rooms and, and stuff. And I could tell they spoke Spanish and they, I mean, obviously they spoke Spanish. And I was uh, talking to the bartender. Uh, I went up there and sat by the bartender and I was like, hey, what's up with the group? You know, and he and he told me what they you know, they were from uh, Colombia and they were there to learn. Um, they were police officers and all this. And in Colombia, they don't have all the beers on tap uh, like that. And he said, so they were sampling all the beers. And I was just joking. I was like, because all of my, being from Memphis, I have a lot of Mexican friends and they love Bud Light, right? And I was joking. I said, let me guess, out of everything they have up there, they want, they like Bud Light the most. And he said, absolutely. And I said, get the hell out of here. They, it was Bud Light was their favorite. In my first uh, time in Ireland. My first time in Ireland. I mean, it, I, I go in and uh, I go into this classic Irish pub. It just the exact perfect. Imagine a perfect concept of an Irish pub. That this is it, you know, wooden everything's and 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 quite lovely. Yeah, but they were and they were selling Guinness, of course. But and they also had Schmidtics, which I can't understand why they even make Schmidtics. But then they also had Budweiser, American Budweiser. I'm like. I asked the bartender, why do you have Budweiser here? You're Irish. Be proud. Wow. They was a Budweiser? <laughs> it's, it's American lager. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's uh 
bourbon and whiskey, man. That's uh, I, I realize I'm a little pre I'm a little uh, bigoted when it comes to beer. I mean, I was in the Czech Republic, and they were bragging. Our hosts were bragging to us, saying that you know we invented Pilsner. And I oh. said, you might want to keep that to yourself. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, see, and that's, I'm, I'm going to let the cat out of the bag here. I am a, um, I am a Belgian, uh, uh, beer guy. I love, uh, shock top and, uh, um, the uh, blue, moon. blue moon. Yeah. Now I don't go as far as putting oranges and stuff on there, but I do, especially on tap. I like them. Um, I just, man, I'm just, you don't guy. go as far as putting oranges in it, but you like shock top. Oh, come whose on. advertising is that they put oranges in it <laughs> yeah i know it's a big big orange head and everything <laughs> it's uh, i like the belgian white that's uh i'm just no, I, I like guy. a belgian i like a belgian wheat i oh, assume a belgian white right that yeah belgian that white, works yeah. I mean, and my favorite for a long time my favorite beer when you could still get it in the states was uh was a franzis connor dunkel the franzis connor vice beer is fine i do like wheat beers but the the dunkel was extraordinary the flavor, the color, it, it, it was just extremely good. And I was so angry when they discontinued it in the States. I went to Sydney, Australia. They took me into a bottle shop, and I just happened to walk up to an aisle where they had Franz's Connor Dunkel, and I filled the shopping cart with the shit. <laughs> <laughs> you just fill it to put it in here, all of it. Wait, yeah, I want all of it. <laughs> I'm going to be here for a week. It's good. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I did. Uh, now I will say one thing: there is a beer that I really like on tap, and that's Dosecchi. Um, oh. When I can find it on tap, I just man, it to me it is just crisp and and it's not heavy. So yeah. I don't always drink beer, but when I do, sometimes I'm asleep. <laughs> <laughs> but when I'm a teenager, it's Dosecchi on tap. Now I, it's a. Uh, 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 somebody in the chat, a uh, friend of mine, what was that? He said, um, oh, it was, uh, oh, come on, where was it? That was funny. Oh, Stella, Stella Artois. That is so nasty. I, yeah. I, I can't do the Stella yeah, Artois. No, no, I um, Spotten, which I think is the parent company of Francis Connor now, uh, also does things like Optimator. And, and and when you can't get the kind of beer that I would normally prefer, if I'm in, if I'm in one of those places that only has the, like the commercial beers, if I can at least find like a spot and optimator or something like that, I can I can do those. Yeah, I, my uh, the home office for the company that I work at um, for the I've been with this company 15 years and it's been in Providence, Rhode Island. So I spent a lot of time in Boston, Providence and New England. Um, and there are a lot of beer snobs there. And so every time we went out to eat, they're like, oh, we're going to go over here because they have all these and they just rattle off all these beers on tap and everything. And I'm going and I'm like getting the sample glasses, you know, you can get all the different and I'm just like, oh, OK, uh, man, it, can I get some uh, Buffalo Trace? Can I get some? Give me some bourbon. Give me some whiskey or something. Uh I just, yeah, they make fun. That's what of I did when I, I was in, I was in London two or three weeks ago. And I remember I, there was this pub, right? We, we got a place in Camden town, which is my favorite place. I just, I love being in Camden and the, there was a pub downstairs of our flat. And I went in there and they didn't have any beer better than there was, there was Guinness. I mean, there was, there was always like the best choice anywhere would, would be, would be Guinness. I'm not saying that Guinness is great. It's just kind of sad when that's the best you can get. So what I did was I said, okay, well, let's make, let's make Guinness, make it out to be like an American craft beer. Put in, uh, put in a shot of Jack Daniels first, then fill the rest with Guinness. And then I'll doctor it with this, uh, with my scorpion pepper that I had in my pocket at the moment. And then, so I just dump a bunch of scorpion pepper in it and they here, try this. <laughs> now, <laughs> there you go. That's there's one way to do it. <laughs> I tell being from Tennessee, I tell everybody real Tennessee whiskey is George Dickel, not Jack Daniels. Uh, I, you know, Jack Daniels is a teenager. Ironically, it costs way more in Tennessee than any, uh, anywhere else. It's like, it's made there and it's through the roof there. But George Dickel number 12 is far better 
than Jack Daniels. Um, but we're coming up. We actually we just crossed over the hour, man. It's, I have to uh, wonder how many of our how many subscribers or how many viewers we lost when we went off into the weeds on beer. Uh, actually, it went up. Uh, it went up <laughs> by about ten people. <laughs> it was. It, we're talking about cool stuff now. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Uh, but if you have a few minutes, there were a few questions. Sure. Um, if you don't mind. Okay. Yeah. It's um. Uh, now Cosmic Kyle, uh, can you expound on what you mean by when you said, could you expound on, uh, on essential? What did you mean, Kyle? I'll come back to your question. If you can put in the chat, what you meant by it, uh, uh let's see. Was it a partial question? Well, I, it, I think it was right in, um, the middle of a conversation we were talking about, um, uh, with the, I think creationism and uh, things. So I'm yeah, not exactly we were, sure. Yeah, we, we wandered a bit. Yeah, we, we've kind of been all over there. But that's what I like. I like the uh, free flowing conversations, and you know, let's just uh, see where it goes. So, uh, oh, now this one, you and I both are going to have to go over there and jump on him for that. Buzz Sawyer and the Undertaker. How many times have you been called the Undertaker? It's been a couple times. Yeah. It's <laughs> yeah, he's yeah. uh yeah, we'll we'll have to go over there and uh span. Well, I understand panel. that the Undertaker has recently come out as Christian. Really? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know I that. didn't know that he's gone all the way into flat earth. Oh. Huh. Which by the way, the, the the flat earth thing, I I I am I am aware that there is a one flat earther who says that he's not a Christian, but basically it's it's an entirely a Christian creationist movement. I have absolute every every flat earther I have come across has been a Christian, and it's weird because only like one or two actually use scripture talking about the pillars under the earth or something. Isn't that funny? You've got the Bible on your side for that argument. Why the hell not use it? But I mean, <laughs> these these people don't use the they, they don't read the Bible. No. Yeah. If this is the this is the thing that bothers me most about this, so many Christians when they tell me that that they're more moral than I am, right? Because if yeah, they feel sorry for me because I'm not a Christian, they're better than me because they're a Christian. They're they're on their third felony and their fourth marriage as a drug addicted alcoholic <laughs> fornicator, but they're better than me because they're a Christian. They've never cracked open a Bible. They don't know what a creed is. They don't care what the book says. That is correct. Exactly they don't right. even know what it means to be Christian. I it's, I it's often the t-shirt that they wear, like for the Dallas Cowboys, it's just a t-shirt oh, you yeah. put on. That's exactly you're exactly right. That is spot on. That's they're for one team and they're going to defend that team no matter how wrong they are. And whether they're losing by 21 points, they don't care. They're going to keep <laughs> defending the team. It's just, but I'm often called a, it's funny because I'm often called a liberal Christian or progressive Christian, because when I hear the fundamentalists go out and, and want to hammer LGBTQ or all of these different things, uh, that they see as as being um, immoral or things like this, because I, I, you know, I slam back on them because that's not what we're called to do. That's that's a that's BS. That's it. And so, anyways, what I what I quite often tell them is, um, from every uh, now, my mother was like a hippie. She literally loved everybody taught us to love and respect everybody. I was, even though I grew up in the Bible Belt in the South, um, I was exposed to a lot of different minorities. Um, one of the, one of her fav uh, best friends was uh, two men at her office that were uh, married and lived together. And they were two of the most awesome individuals I'd ever met. And I quite often tell them, why would I, go out and say anything to anybody when most of them were twice as moral as I am. What the, I mean, what the hell? I've got my own problems. Why do I need to go out and say anything to anybody else? You know, that that's between them and God. If God exists, then that's between them too and God. They're adults. They can do whatever they want. I've got my own problems. So, but, oh, 
Oh, I like that one. That's, somebody said that they call me the sexy Christian. I doubt that. But So Kyle asks, uh, what is the most dangerous form of science denial in today's world? Interestingly, um, we, I saw Dennis Prager say that he didn't care if you're, uh, you know, what kind of believer you are, whether you're Jewish or Christian or whatever. But, but it, he didn't he didn't care if you're a creationist or what have you, as long as you uh, didn't object to vaccines and medical science. And he now himself objects to vaccines and medical science. It's just a huge degree of hypocrisy. But we have, on average, a couple of dozen kids every year that die from medical neglect because the family chose to pray over them for easily treatable conditions that could be identified and treated by, by any hospital. But it's because, but partly is because we don't have a medical care system in this country that's worth a fuck. Uh, and it's, poss- it's partly because parents are so stupid that they don't have any idea how to get free medical care if they need it for their kids. Mm. And partly because they believe in fucking magic. Oh, I, it, I am so... That is a very, very, very sore spot with me. The um, denial of um, medical treatment um, for children because of this, this garbage uh, understanding, you know, uh, what I quite often tell people, you know, who lean that way is, you know, if you believe that God exists and, and we're made in the image of God, um, and God is a rational being, then that means we're rational beings. And the, um, uh, you must have a different version of the Bible than I do. <laughs> well, I don't approach. Well, I don't approach it like <laughs> like the fundamentalists, and, and that's a whole different story. But yeah, it's a uh, that's the thing. <laughs> that was a good one. Um, the uh, you know it, the miracle is modern medicine. It is the doctors. It is. Are you going to tell me that 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 all that people being healed by modern medicine and uh, all of the, you know, medical technology and things, there's no bad to it. That's a good thing. So it's, it, it's got to be the point. If, if you think that God is good, you know, and that's what you're getting from scripture and, and this is a good thing. How could you not think that this is from God? I, I just, I'm not sure to what degree the Jehovah's witnesses deny science, but I know that the, what they call the Christian scientists, mm-hmm. ironically, which is a religious sect that is prevalent in, in South Texas, where I live. I don't live in South Texas, but, you know, the southern part of the state that I live, mm-hmm. Christian science is very prevalent there, and they do deny medical treatment. Mm. They deny medical science. They don't trust any of it. I'm Oh, that just, that really, really burns me up. Anybody, I don't care what religion they are. I don't care, what, it just, if you're going to deny uh, modern medical technology and medicine to a child or something like that. Uh, you don't deserve to have those children. In my opinion, I, I think that at that point, the state has a vested interest in protecting that child's life. Um, and I don't think in any kind of way, that's a violation of religious freedom. We don't have a religious freedom to allow our children to die. And so, yeah, I don't want to make a comment about that because the the foster system that we have it sucks too. Yeah. So there's, there's I don't disagree with that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Pasta Mike says it is argued that teaching evolution degrades values, undermines morals, and fosters atheism. It it's considered appeals to consequences. Is that yeah? Well, it could foster atheism. I grant that. Um, does not ev- teaching evolution does not degrade values. I agree. Uh, I would argue that religion technically degrades values. Uh, it very often does, uh, and and certainly promotes uh, things that we should not call values. Things like exceptionalism and uh, and, and nationalism and racism and so forth. But with evolution. You are one with everything, just like the Buddhists want to be. We are connected to all other things. It's like Obi Wan Kenobi said, you know <laughs> that, that that you know we're, that, that we're we're part of all related things. 
one with everything we we, we are one we are a part of nature not apart from it and the problem the problem i have with a lot of believers is they deny the real world as we brought up earlier to pretend that they are fantasy beings in an alternative reality that they are not of this world yeah, yeah that's there's... just more reality denial you're saying you've, you've, you've replaced in your mind you've taken out the dreams and made them the reality that you live in and you've put the reality in the dreams you know and i actually uh as a christian atheist uh, don't uh, necessarily disagree with that i think so many christians um live quote unquote heavenly minded it's almost like this world doesn't mean anything and it's like hey you know you're here and we have to deal with you <laughs> and your child you have children and you vote so how about you kind of get your head back here where we're at and, and kind of focus on, you know, the life that uh, we're all experiencing together. And you talk about de degrading values. Think about this. I mean, I've met so many people who think that life is this torturous period that you have to endure just to get to the, 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 the heavenly gate afterward, right, to the eternal afterlife. And that nothing seems to have any value. Nothing in the world has any value, not even your own family has any value compared to that. And now that's a loss of value, isn't it? Mm. Whereas if you Absolutely. think that life is precious because it is short, that it is temporary and it did, and it's not repeating, then, you know, we, we have a tendency as humans to value most of that, which is rare. And what is more rare and fleeting than the remaining moments of your life or of somebody else's life, you know? So, yeah, no. I think I, I think agree. we value. I think people who accept the science of evolution, I think, value life more. We're certainly not what is often accused of as of being racist, because uh, whereas there have been many people, famously in history, who said that God created the separate races on the separate oh, God, continent yes. with the with the intention that they remain separated, and that only one of those races, according to some of these ideologies, even have souls and properly count as humans. Yep. People who accept evolution, of course, have a very different view, that we are all related, that we are all equally. You know. Right. And, and and I would go as far as to say, um, uh, because I do, and, and for my Christians out there who may not like my position, I believe that evolution is true. And, and that, the, that the, the universe is old and, and the <laughs> earth is old. And I don't think that has any conflict with scripture. Maybe and we're neither the biggest. We're neither the earth is neither the biggest thing in the galaxy right. nor the center of it. <laughs> and and for a lot of my Christian brothers and sisters out there, aliens probably exist. I mean, given probability, but the they're past, not in our government. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're not lizard people. Stop that. <laughs> no, you're right about that. It's uh no, what I was gonna say is I think that, um, so I'm a kind of person that given the fact that we share so much DNA, not just DNA, but, um, uh, kind of a, uh, higher level of awareness with other animals such as elephants and higher primates and things like this. Um, well, the dog that was just here, he's, he, he's at my, he's on my feet right now. There are dogs that use uh, these these electric pads. The dog puts the, the paw on the pad and it, it says yes. a word, right? So the, the dog learns a new word on the pad. And then, because I know my, my stepdaughter has a dog that they have this pad and the dog and the her communicate through this electronic pad. Right. That's speech, right? Yeah, yeah, it is in a sense. Absolutely. Yeah, and I mean, so they they don't have the cognitive ability we do as far as communicating ideas. Yeah, but that doesn't mean that they are in any other way intellectually impaired. Yeah, that's my thing. Is I I really struggle with the fact that we take like elephants and bonobos and and gorillas and uh, orangutans and we put them in a zoo and and hold them because of. I mean, how many times has somebody been to the zoo and, and you can look at the gorillas and, and things and they look sad? You know, that's that's not just they're mimicking some kind of altruism that we have. They actually probably are sad and depressed and 
Uh, it's one of the hypocrisies that I admit to that I, I tend to give, I, I tend to, I, I tend to think that the, a higher level of cognizance bequeaths more rights. Yeah. That the more intelligent you are, the more rights you should be bestowed and, or allowed. And of course that when you're talking about elephants and, uh, and, uh, and, and the other primates and such, yeah, uh -huh. they, they, they should, we shouldn't be putting them in these kind of positions. Which is why I've kind of given up pork. Pigs are smarter than dogs. Oh, come on, man. No, not the smoked ribs. You're yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, well, you're in Texas, so you get you got the brisket, so you're cool. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I haven't completely. I'm, I'm, I, I yeah. said it's a hypocrite. I mean, I'm a hypocrite because I haven't given up meat completely, but I know oh, that I'm with it should. I, I tell vegetarians and vegans all the time, they definitely have a lot uh, higher moral road than me. I, I actually struggle with the fact that I love steak. I love smoked ribs. Um, and yeah, I, I have, have cut out a lot of the meat. And uh, I have, uh, we, we go with uh, meat substitutes whenever possible. There are some things, too. there are some things that science can't replicate. And there are special occasions when I may turn to them. But for my daily meals, I am trying to be meat free as much as possible. Well, and it, there's a huge health. Benefit. Well, not as much as possible. I'm being a hypocrite again. <laughs> um, no, I'm you're sorry. just lying out. No. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah, that's that's true because it, it's not as it's not meat free as much as possible. But I do yeah. use meat substitutes whenever I can. I eat a lot less meat than I used to. I'm cutting further back all the time. Yeah, I love pork, and and actually, if you look at a lot of these studies of uh, pork, it is. Absolutely I had a pig living in my house for a while that I was babysitting for my daughter. Oh, that changed your whole mind, huh? Well, it's this pig is like one of those, uh, and it's not. It's a Vietnamese potbelly pig, but it's one. It's one of the really cute ones that comes in multi colors. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I've got this adorable thing in my house that I just can't. Um, eat <laughs> yeah exactly it's like uh yeah no there's harry we can we can't eat harry no i have a friend of mine who uh has had pigs i told for... you my cat would get on camera eventually yes but you were wrong because your dog was first <laughs> <He's>... <laughs> yeah it was uh yeah you're right you called it uh let's blue breeze through these i know you got uh, uh the rest of the night to get to what is the most interesting thing Aaron has learned about evolution in the past five years? That some of it is uh, is not uh, is not is not entirely random. That it is uh, what is I, I'm trying to remember the word. What are you doing? <laughs> Telios or yes, uh, yeah, that, that that it's that Artilos. it is determined. That it's uh, it is in a sense directed, right? Yeah, that it's not entirely accidental. There are there are certain areas of the genome that there there are mutations are that is protected against mutagenic agents. There are some places where mutations and it, that are uh, positively encouraged, you know, or that the positive mutations are encouraged. I was surprised to find that out. It makes perfect sense. Yeah, that we would have a system that would be like that. Um, it was just hard for me to to wrap my head around the fact that 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 is in fact the case, that it's not entirely random. That, that yeah, you is... just screwed up. You just gave all kinds of fundamentalists. Up. No, I'm just playing. I've got a, a friend of mine <laughs> who's uh, who's actually uh, you can studied... program that into the system. It's just, it's just yeah, the way it's, that it right. Comes well, that's a thing. Yeah, that's it, it, people shy away from uh, telos or teleology because they think it necessarily denotes theism or something like that and it really doesn't it just it's just an endedness or or uh there seems to be some kind of ultimate reason that it's getting to this point or things like that it's not any uh it's not any better of an argument for theism than it is you know not naturalism it just that's the way that it works but i've got a friend of mine who's actually studying philosophy of biology that I've been trying to get on and eventually I will about this issue in biology and the avoidance of using words like telos and or teleology because of uh, the perceived, you know, ramifications or things like that. And it's, it's like, it doesn't lead to that at all. There are systems that can be incidentally deterministic 
and that's that was the surprising that there's more depth to much more depth to evolution than darwin could have imagined i mean he came up with natural selection good on him but that's actually not the main determinist uh, that's not that's not the main uh mechanism of evolution and now we're finding you know it's actually genetic drift and we're finding that there's more to that significantly more than he could have even guessed yeah that's that's a good point um Iron Charitier wants to know, are all religions made up? Yes. What is the worst made up religion? <laughs> <laughs> um, Scientism. <laughs> the worst made up religion is going to be a hard call. It's going to be Abrahamic. Mm. Yep. It's Come either on, going to be. throw me a bone, man. Come on. Yeah. I'm sorry. I can't. <laughs> um, Scientism is the worst. <laughs> the. Uh, yeah. What is it? Yeah. The uh... I I would argue that everything from Abraham on down is defective. Yeah, you would. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, I mean, we can they... get into it if you want to do like a different yeah, show about that. Yeah, we can. No, I, yeah. I would definitely be open for that. I, I would love to hear your thoughts on it. I like I said, I, I, I think that would be a whole show into itself. Yeah, yeah. I don't. I don't typically do uh, debates on here, but I would love to hear you know, your position, lay it out and, and kind of get into the nuance and things like that. Um, I see the next question. I debate yeah. athe atheists all the time. And sometimes Mr. Rock comes up, ask Aaron about his surname, Ra. I want to know why he has the sun God as a surname since you're off topic anyway. I don't think there is a topic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, um, when I, when I got into Usenet, I started, ah, ouch, you're hanging off your claws. Get <laughs> off of me. <laughs> that's why they that's why the egyptians thought they were gods yes okay <laughs> so i was I, I got into um when i first got online I, I had a computer related job unlimited overtime and it was just the easiest thing to do so i'm taking all these customer calls there's the same call all the time and at the end so just to keep myself from going into mindless boredom i get onto usenet i get onto talk.origins so I am now arguing the, the religion versus science kind of thing. This is since the late 1990s. I needed to come up with a handle other than, you know, just my name. And um, I had already ascertained that Amun-Ra, the, the composite of the air god and the sun god, was seemingly a template for the god of Western monotheism, that the two gods... Yehovah uh, and uh, and Amun Ra seem to have the same background story. They even have the same wife. It seems whether it's Asherah or Atherat, however you pronounce that. So I saw Amun Ra as being a template for Yehovah, and so I was just thinking of a name. My name is already Aaron, and rather than you know put my old last name on it, Aaron Ra, to give a nod to that. Now, I wish now that I had put a little bit more thought in it because I didn't realize that I would become semi-famous <laughs> under that name. <laughs> Aaron Ra Mandela. That's a play on the real last name. There you go. <laughs> yeah, but that, but that's but that's where that came from. It's and just, I just a thumb in the nose to theist. That's it. That's all it's for. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the answer they wanted, I think. <laughs> uh let's see here's a couple more and then uh we'll fly off here if you if you have to bounce let me know um well i've got other projects to do but they're not immediately pressing so we can okay cool uh let's see there's only a few more um <laughs> where was it at uh, it's oh funny. i talk to people that you know like friends from back in the day and I remember, and i say you remember 30 years ago when we would be sitting on the sofa wishing there was something good on because we didn't have anything better to do than watch TV. Yeah. What would, I can't even, can't even remember that because we're all so incredibly busy now. I absolutely, I agree a hundred percent. That's, uh, I haven't turned on a television. I mean, sports. Other than that's the only time I turned it on sports. Yeah, I don't. I've turned on a television to watch something if I want to watch a, a specific movie or a documentary. I would sometimes watch YouTube if I want to, you know, something like that. If it's a special occasion kind of a thing, not a TV show, 
but I mean, I, for my mother's Mother's Day one, uh, I bought her a, a TV, and and um, because she was always watching the old lady channels, you know, Matlock and shit like that. Matlock, yeah. You know, yeah. I'm like, you know what else you can watch? Let me just show you, right? So, <laughs> so we we watched a whole bunch of movies from the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Oh yeah. So there there are occasions like that that I'll turn oh, on yeah. a TV, but never to watch TV. Not it's... in 25 years have I done that. Wow. Now, I do have Netflix because I'm one of those that will hear about a series enough. I'm like, okay, I got to go check it out. And I then... have, I confess, you reminded me, I, I did, I have watched a few uh, TV shows that you wouldn't show on TV, if that yeah. makes any sense. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, um, I've watched things that are billed as TV shows, but would never be seen on ABC, NBC, or CBS. Yes. Things like <laughs> The Boys. Yes. Then, yeah, you <laughs> definitely will not see that. <laughs> uh, I'm actually currently vegging on, and if you haven't seen it, the first couple of episodes, it takes a minute to get hooked on it. But then once you're hooked, it's there. It's the Pinky Blinders, the Pinky Blinders. On I haven't Netflix. seen that one. Ooh. I did see one that I absolutely fell in love with, like right away. Um, my wife got the audio book for American Gods by Neil Gaiman. And we read that on a road trip because we do a lot of road trips. Yeah. And then they came out with a TV series and the, the cinematography for the TV series. And I just thought the writing, everything was so good. I fell in love with it. And it takes, if you, if you haven't seen it, it takes four episodes to get into it, but you will get into it. Yeah. Yeah. I'll check it out for sure. Yeah. I'm, and I'm as I said, about... just the cinematography alone is a selling point for this show. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I, I saw, saw some of the episodes where you gave your feelings about the, uh, uh, Godzilla uh, things because I know that's your uh, Godzilla. I, fan, I but... so nearly wore a Godzilla shirt. This <laughs> evening, <right? laughs> I wasn't going to bring it up as because I know that's kind of a sore subject with how horrible all of the modern day. Uh, yeah, the things. last one where they were st yeah. where where the the heroes of the show believe that that, that fluoridation is a communist plot. <laughs> <laughs> oh damn! And the, the whole hollow Earth thing, oh, and I'm like, yeah. oh, just the anti-intellectual paranoid conspiracy theory crap. Yes, I mean, there's I'm... never been a good Godzilla movie. I mean, let's be completely honest not not since 1954. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and it's but that's kind of that's what was cool about it, though. Is it well, didn't I take have that to back. Be like great. Uh, I take that back. The American remake with Mothman. Raymond Burr had some elements about that that were extremely good like the his overdubs on the beginning when he start, when he talks about the devastation of the city for example that just that set the stage so beautifully that this is going to be a horror horror uh, disaster flick and now and then we started to how it all happened yeah you know and so his his overdubs on that and and when he starts talking about um, you know, when, when Godzilla releases his breath and tears down the, the defenses and, and Raymond Burr is like, I don't know that the city has any defense now. <laughs> yeah. I love those bits. So they just interjected an American actor into that and like, like rewrote the movie to appeal to American audiences. And while I object to the concept of that now, it, it, I understand in 1956 why they did that and it worked. I thought they did it well enough. Yeah. And they did it with uh, with a flair to it that I actually like the 1956 version better than the 1954 Gojira, because his overdubs do have a sense of foreboding, doom, that could best be conveyed by Black Sabbath in music. I think. Oh, Black Sabbath! You're going way back to uh, my uh, my days of uh, partaking of the herbal wonder. Uh, 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 <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was. Uh, I think Iron Man. Uh, uh, Iron Man. I mean, uh, Black Sabbath. Iron Man was like one of the first songs I ever heard by Black Sabbath, and I was just hooked. It, it may surprise uh, no one that I was a huge Black Sabbath fan in the seventies. No. Oh, <laughs> uh, I, well, I grew up. Uh, my mom was uh, kind of like a. Um, I don't want to say groupie as it's, you know, pejorative, but she, she hung around a lot of the local bands in Memphis. Um, 
and you know Memphis and Austin and Seattle are kind of like a lot of the uh, music scenes and I so I grew up really on a lot of classic rock um classic metal uh you know ACDC and 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 Black Sabbath and I mean you name it, it, it we listened to all of it all the way up until you know I still like metal now um it's uh I, I'm definitely a metal guy but I do like a little hip hop and you know kind of mix it up a little bit so um I wish I was more versatile as versatile as I get is uh classic blues now that is I, being from Memphis I love blues and blues rock I mean to me a perfect night on the weekend is going to Bill Street and finding a dark club you know where there you got a guy up there it's got a steel guitar and he's playing blues and blues rocks and you've I got me bourbon you beer um <laughs> coming and just enjoying the music that's that's fantastic because the blues guitar i could listen to to uh, no lyrics blues guitar with drums accompaniment you know and bass of course just just but but primarily listening to that that you, you know how blues guitar is yeah yeah absolutely but yeah i could just i could just fill a night with that yeah i that was one of my favorite things about stevie ray vaughn i mean even when stevie ray didn't sing he just played you know i could just man i could listen uh all night all right we got to get off here because i know you got tons of things to do so let's uh last question uh do you think philosophy is important to be well versed in philosophy when arguing against a religion you well philosophy is earlier. important when you're going to argue philosophy of course but i would all step outside of the question and say that although i criticize philosophy a hell of a lot uh, primarily because i see it so grossly misused all the time uh, i think it's important to teach philosophy in high school because i encounter people on the daily now who have absolutely no idea what logic is oh gosh critical yeah. thinking please can we make critical thinking a mandatory course <laughs> in high school <laughs> that would violate yeah. what the powers that be want to do? Yeah, absolutely right. <laughs> Jason Torn, ironically, is an atheist friend of mine. He is now a theist because he thinks Stevie Ray Vaughan was a god. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I always thought Lemmy was god. They, yeah, absolutely. They were. <laughs> Dogma. That is the best movie ever made. If, if as far as uh talking about religion or, or things have you seen the movie dogma from yeah you know what i'm talking yep. about that's, yep, that's i have fun. but Aaron, thank you so much for joining us man i am i am uh so happy that you would uh come on here and spend time bsing with me not such a huge channel yet i'm gonna be famous one day but not yet uh and yep. man I thank oh, you so much. Real, real quick before we go, I've got I, yes. I do a lot of traveling and such, and I and I I, I tend to get excited about it because I love travel. Mm -hmm. But uh, I've got a trip coming up that I'm more excited about than anything I've done in the last few years, a couple years anyway. I went on an expedition, a paleontological expedition into South Africa, which was uh, an amazing experience. And I'm going to do that again. And I was looking forward to doing that since I came back, but of course, you know, COVID got in the way. But I'm going to be going on a paleontological expedition into the Badlands of Wyoming, so South Central Wyoming. I'm told that we're going to be 70 miles from the nearest town and 30 miles from pavement. Whoa. Yeah. So the Jeep I bought will finally come in handy. That was the reason I bought it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll say some prayers to the mythical deity for you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> Uh, that's awesome yeah are you going to do is that going to be something that you're going to talk about on your youtube channel oh yeah i'm going to make so many videos about that yeah that's going to be awesome man yeah I, i'm I, so I, looking forward to this trip it's going to be one of those awful things where the, the where the where the conditions are so grueling where we i have to bring a ice chest with 60 liters of water just for drinking Whoa. yeah I, because there's no water and I have to bring solar panels. I have to bring, uh, you know, we have to, br I have to bring a bucket with a toilet seat on it that goes in its own tent, if you know what I mean. 
Yeah, I know exactly what you mean. Yeah, yeah this is what we call luxury in these parts. <laughs> yes, <exactly. laughs> I'm from the south, man. I know all about them buckets and toilets. Things. Yeah, and I got a <laughs> shovel that comes with it. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Just make sure you burn it or bury it. <laughs> so, yeah, is there uh, anything else you want to promote? Uh, no, no, that, that's that, okay. that's it for the right moment. On. Man, thank you so much, brother. I, I have enjoyed the conversation and. Thank you, everybody uh, who's uh, stuck around and listened to us BS and talk about 52 different topics. Uh, hopefully, one day I'll have him back on and we can talk about more specific things. But uh, you guys have a good evening. Thank you very much for showing up.